Hello and welcome to time series forecasting. In this video, I'm going to talk about our first method of decomposing a time series into various components that we talked about. We talked about uh, a time series yt can be decomposed into trend cycle component, seasonal component and uh, the remainder component to understand more about a series and to improve our forecasting. Our first method is called classical decomposition which has two forms. We can either use a model in the additive form that we talked about earlier or we can use classical decomposition in the multiplicative form and essentially the choice will depend on whether our data is showing a trend cycle and seasonal variations those are proportion to the level of series or not. And here with the classical decomposition we assume that uh, the seasonal variations or the seasonal component is uh, constant. And then we are going to use seasonal indices M based on whether our data is quarterly, monthly or daily. Right. So the value of M or the seasonal index will depend on the frequency of the data. For quarterly data we will use M equals 4. For monthly we will use M equals 12 and for the daily data we will use M equals 7. So these are the steps that uh, we use to decompose a time series in a classical decomposition. So if M is an even number we will compute the trend cycle component using a moving average of order M followed by moving averages of order 2. We talked about uh, this earlier. And then if uh, m is an odd number, then we will calculate a trend cycle component by simply calculating uh, mma. So for example, if uh, m is 4, we will calculate uh, 4ma and that will be followed by 2ma. And if m is 7, that is we are using a daily data set, we will extract uh, trend cycle component by calculating a 7MA. And remember for the case of covered cases that I showed you earlier, we were doing exactly the same thing and calculating a 7 days moving average because remember for the covert cases we have a daily data set. So that will be the first step and this step will give us this part. And remember whenever we estimate something we put a hat on top of this. So our trend cycle component uh, of our time series will be represented by t hat. And again this trend cycle component uh, will be extracted from a time series based on uh, the frequency of the data. In step 2 we will calculate uh, a detrended series. And now it will depend whether our series is additive. If our series is additive then we will calculate uh, yt minus dt to calculate the detrended series. And if our model is uh, multiplicative, we will divide yt by dt to calculate uh, a detrended series. And this will give us uh, a time series which will not have any trend. So remember in step 2 we are removing uh, the trend from the series. In the third step we are going to average the uh, detrended values of a season to estimate the seasonal component. For example, if we are using monthly data, then we will calculate the average of each March, that is March this year, March last year, March a year from that, and then we will use that average value for each March. And similarly, we'll do this uh, for the every month of the year. And uh, this will give us uh, the seasonal component. So we're going to do something like this here. So we're going to calculate the averages of each year and see here we'll calculate the average of March for example and it will repeat itself again and again in a time series. In step 4 we are going to calculate uh, the remainder component and uh, again the remainder component will depend on whether we are using an additive model or uh, a multiplicative model. For the case of an additive model our remainder component will be our original series minus the trend and seasonality and whatever is left over is uh, the remainder component. For the multiplicative model our remainder component will be calculated by dividing our series by the trend component that we calculated in step 1 multiplied by the seasonal component that we calculated in step 3. So this way we'll have uh, 
all of uh, these three components uh, segregated from this time series and we'll have our time series decomposed into a trend cycle component by calculating moving averages a seasonal component by calculating averages across uh, seasons in the past and the remainder component will be whatever left over after calculating the trend cycle component and uh, the seasonal component so this is uh, our first method of uh, decomposition in the next video i'll talk about some of the problems with uh, the classical decomposition and how to deal with those uh, problems by using other decomposition methods all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye